Kinetic energy is energy of motion. The equation for kinetic energy, which you've probably met if you've already taken physics, is 1 half mv squared. In this equation, in order to get kinetic energy in joules, we need to have the mass in kilograms and the speed in meters per second. If you are given a problem and the mass isn't in kilograms or the speed isn't in meters per second, you need to convert those into kilograms and meters per second before using the equation. As another side note, we want to make sure that what we're squaring here is only the speed. Don't take 1 half times m times v, whatever that is, and square the whole thing. Just the speed is squared. All masses have kinetic energy because all masses are moving. In physics, you're usually interested in macroscopic objects, the earth, a human, a roller coaster. But in chemistry, we're more interested in the kinetic energy of tiny particles, like atoms and molecules, gas particles, the kinetic energy that particles have in the liquid form, this hot cup of coffee, for example. In physics, you're dealing more with macroscopic objects. In chemistry, we're dealing with the kinetic energy of tiny particles. Thermal energy is due to the kinetic energy of tiny particles. And we measure the average kinetic energy of a collection of particles as the temperature. A measure of the average kinetic energy, the average motion of a collection of particles. Let's find the kinetic energy of a single dinitrogen monoxide molecule moving at 650 meters per second. Dinitrogen monoxide has this formula, N2O. In case you're wondering what that is, it's laughing gas, which was used apparently back in the day to make people do silly things. To find the kinetic energy, we're going to use the kinetic energy equation. We have the speed, 650 meters per second. It's in the right unit. But we need the mass. What is the mass? Well, we don't know what the mass is in kilograms, but we do know that one molecule should have a mass equal to the number of AMUs that we can find from the periodic table. Each nitrogen atom has a mass of about 14 AMUs. Each oxygen atom from the periodic table has a mass of about 16 AMUs. And if you add all that up, that's 44 AMUs, which is not the correct unit. We need kilograms. My students are required to memorize the fact that one gram has the same mass as 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd AMUs. You can see that it takes a lot of AMUs to equal even one gram. We're going to cancel the AMU units, but we're not quite there yet because we need to have the mass in kilograms. So of course one kilogram is a thousand grams. We're going to whoosh, whoosh, cancel the grams. If we multiply that out, we'll now have our mass in kilograms. So now it's a matter of putting all of that into the kinetic energy equation. One half, there's our mass that we calculated, there's our speed, we're squaring only the speed. We're going to round that to two significant figures because that's what we started with. And the unit, of course, for energy is joules. What about potential energy? Potential energy is stored energy. In physics, you talk about potential energy of objects that have been raised to a height or the potential energy that's stored in a spring that has been stretched or squished from its natural position. But in chemistry, we're dealing with chemical potential energy due to the electrostatic forces between charged particles. Let's say we have two nuclei, both of which are positively charged. They're going to want to push each other away, but they're surrounded by an electron cloud. There's a certain minimum potential energy distance a certain separation where the potential energy is minimized between those two nuclei. 
if we try to push those two nuclei closer together, the potential energy goes up. If we try and pull them apart, the potential energy goes up. Chemical potential energy is due to the electrostatic forces between particles. It's related to the specific arrangement of atoms and electrons in the substance. Are electrons transferred? And then there's an electrostatic attraction. Are the electrons shared? Are they shared equally? Are they shared unequally? All those sorts of things fold into our thinking about chemical potential energy. Let's summarize. Kinetic energy is energy of motion. In chemistry, we are most interested in the motion of atoms and molecules rather than that of macroscopic objects. Our measure of the average kinetic energy of a collection of particles is the collection's temperature. Potential energy is stored energy. In chemistry, we are most interested in the energy stored in the chemical bonds and intermolecular forces between particles. This potential energy is related to the identity of the particles in question and their spatial relation to one another.